you have an idea how you want to start it off? Or I could if you want me to. I feel insecure about starting videos, Daniel. Well, in that case, maybe I'll do it. Basically, this video is super important because uh, we had a breakthrough. We broke on through to the other side last night. And that was by staying committed to a practice of communication and conversating um, in a very efficient and critical and meaningful way. Are you going to save me from my discomfort? I am not here to save you from your discomfort, so do you have something to say? Well, I thought you were going to let me start the video because I felt insecure about doing that. Well, that is a good reminder that what you feel the most insecure about, or what you feel the most uncomfortable about, is probably what you need to do the most. And that's what happened last night with our family. And we talked about a lot of things that most people thought they didn't want to talk about to find out. It's what could potentially connect us the most. And I want to touch on an idea that I know we have a lot of fitness fanatics out there and a lot of people that watch us for fitness tips. That spiritually and emotionally and communication wise, you need to look at that practice just like you look at your fitness. Do you, do you ever hear someone that is really in a high level of fitness say, yeah, I worked out last, uh, I, went to a, I went to a fitness retreat last week, so I'm good for a few years. Have you ever heard anyone say that? Yes. <laughs> yes? Yes. No, I was actually so caught by my own thoughts, I had no idea what you just asked me. Uh, that's cool. You're cool. Uh, <laughs> but my point is that communicating in a very meaningful and fun, comfortable way is not something you do once a year. Depending on, if you want to get to the most advanced level of connecting, which I think deep in our hearts we all do want that. We have this brain in our chests known as the hearts that thrives on that empathetic connection. You need to practice it on a daily basis. And if you want to take it to an advanced level, you need to practice in advanced ways. You need to make it a challenge and you need to really put some effort into it. And this is something that's going to be a lifelong practice. Just like if you want to do one arm handstands or one arm pull ups or run a mile under five minutes, that, that no one just says, Yeah, I, I ran the other day, so I'm, I can't run a five minute mile now, or I can run a four minute mile. No, they put in days and days of effort. What are you so happy about? I was just laughing. Um, <laughs> I was like listening very carefully just for a moment where I could sneak in a word or two. But you know, you're pretty good at uh, just those, those continuous flows of thought. Sometimes I think you look at me over here and you're like, oh yeah, that's right, I forgot I had another person I'm shooting this video with. <laughs> so what are you going to say other than talking about what you're going to talk about? Um, yeah, I was just going to say that you show me someone that loves comfortable conversations and likes uh, operating in that place, and I'll show you someone that I find boring. Um, I really, I, lately I've really begin to enjoy uncomfortable conversations and actually so the, the more uncomfortable the better to the point where I'm like, where I start feeling like I want to leave the, the area of the conversation, that's when I really know that we're on to something good is when I want to leave. <laughs> and it's so funny when I'm just so glad that I've been able to recognize that as mm. the point of like the, the real, the, where the golden nuggets are stored. And uh, I actually haven't left the conversation yet, but uh, yeah, it's uh, something that's come to my attention recently is that if I have a problem with someone, then most likely I am the problem. Um, and I and it's awesome to keep that idea in mind when you're experiencing anger with someone, and especially continuous anger, because you're like, wait a minute, okay, it takes two to tango here, and there's something. The, some way that I'm approaching this situation that I am just as big of con contribution to the problem as that other person is. So next time you're experiencing anger, I want you to ask yourself, how am I the problem here? What, why am I angry? Why am I angry, Timothy? Yeah, and then up until last night, I used to think, I, I might have thought that people were uninspiring or inspiring. And now I'm not sure if I believe that anymore. I believe that when I call someone uninspiring or I call someone inspiring, I'm actually talking about myself. Um, that I, if let's say our friend J.P. Sears, who hopefully we'll see in a few days, I'm inspired around him, but I'm not necessarily, what I am, I'm inspired by the way I'm present with him, by the way I'm interacting with him, I'm inspired by how present I am. Whereas Joe Schmo over here, I might be like, he's so uninspiring, I don't want to be around him. 
in reality, maybe I'm just distracted when I'm around Joe Schmo. Maybe I'm thinking about how I want to escape the situation. Maybe I'm not present with him. So maybe I'm inspiring around certain people, and I'm uninspiring around certain people, other than putting that on others, blaming others. And I do also want to touch on the idea, a lot of people, I hear this a lot, because a lot of people try to put these practices into practice, into practice, 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 that I am, uh, I, my person can't handle when I'm honest. No, let me, let me rephrase that for you. What you meant to say was that you can't handle their reaction to you being honest. You want the truth? I can't handle the truth! <laughs> oh, my nerve. <laughs> that nerve that kind of went off there for a second. It's getting sensitive. Honestly. I can handle the truth, but sometimes it's challenging. Yeah. Remember, your subconscious might not know your jokes. Um, do you have something to say? I'm going to cut you off. Give me like five seconds. All right, let's give him five seconds. I did have something really important to say. Well, in the meantime, <laughs> well, I, I, I interrupt this interruption. Um, that this is the, the what I'm really getting at in this video. If you stuck around this long, please talk about the wisdom that you find in cat crap because that's what I'm about to talk about. Is that a lot of times we have a tendency when a cat poops in the house, and this is a metaphor, and maybe literally for some of us. It's easier just to wipe it under a rug. Like, let's, I don't want to clean that cat crap up right now. Let me just put it on the, under the rug. And the cat craps the guy, like, oh, let's put it under the rug. And eventually, you're going to have to take care of that mess if you don't want your house stinking. There is another alternative. You can leave the house, you also leave. leave the conversation, and then what kind of low level of consciousness is that? Not one that you want to be a part of, obviously. Or you can burn the house down, a.k.a. get violent. Maybe you need to be like, you ain't going to listen to me? You ain't going to agree with me? No, I'm not, we're not advocating that. Those are two alternatives that are something that I personally don't want anything to do with, violence yeah. and leaving. Do you? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. There's, when you're faced with a challenging conversation or social dynamic, you're not really de the only way you can really de be defeated is if you think that the best solution is to leave. Like you're dis you're so uncomfortable that the best solution is to leave or get violent. What what kind of weakness yeah. is that? What kind of fear is that? that yeah. You're so scared of having a conversation or so scared to get into the point where you might have to agree to disagree yes. that you're going to have to get violent with someone. And you were talking about how like war that's how wars Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a reach, but I'm a reacher and it's a reach, but Maybe that's what war is. Maybe it's like, you know what? I can't come to an agreement with this person, so I'm going to start brainwashing these children over here to uh, fight my battles for me. Heck, why do I even need to have, why do I need to have this fun, comfortable conversation? Let's just kill them. Yeah, yeah. I, which I don't advocate, advocate. I'm giving that as an example of something not to do. I'm going to give you one tip that might change your life when it comes to dealing with social uh, dynamics or a conversation that you find challenging. It is to just say it. There's many different things that could happen in that scenario. But if you, I'll tell you, there's one thing that I know, one way to get it wrong. And that is to have these thoughts and don't share them. To not share your opinion. Mm, yeah, that is your gift to the world. That is what you got to do. The wisdom in this video that we're trying to convey to you is that it is crucial importance to share your truth regardless of other people's expectations. I am inviting that for you and I hope everyone invites that for everyone and I hope we can all agree to disagree if we can't agree. And my point of the cat crap metaphor was that eventually that cat crap is going to build up so much if you don't take care of it immediately. I would recommend taking right when the cat craps clean it up real quick. But if you want to bury it and bury it and you finally eventually have to clean it up, a lot of times people get confused that the cleanup is the problem. They're like, oh, this, I have to clean this cat crap up. This sucks. Why do I have to clean this up? This is the problem. No, the, pro you didn't, the problem wasn't. That's the solution. The solution of cleaning that crap, that is the solution to clean it up. It might not feel like it, but that's what you got to do to get rid of that stink. To have that clean house, to have that full body, to have that fullness of you, the completion of you. So clean up the cat crap immediately, and if it does get built up, still clean it up and realize that cleaning it up is not the problem, it's the solution. Have you ever gone into an argument or a conversation or a discussion being like, you know what, today I'm going to make up a bunch of lies to see if I can get in a fight? I sure hope not. These challenges are in there. They're there, there in that person, they're there in that person. By discussing them, it's not like you're making, creating them. You're dealing with it. Are you, do you have the courage to deal with it? That's right. Mm -hmm. Let me draw your attention to something else. Uh, when, when someone, 
is reactive towards something you say. Maybe you share your opinion to them and they have a very strong reaction and they begin to defend themselves very uh, uh, aggressively. That probably means that there's some truth to your opinion. And let me tell you something about for yourself. When you defend yourself, you actually uh, what your um, what is that saying? When you defend yourself, you're actually um, uh, what, what are you call it? persecuting yourself? Because what you're saying is, hey, I don't really believe in what I'm saying, so I'm gonna say something else that's gonna provoke you to tell me more why my beliefs aren't right. Because when you're at peace with something and you know it's just the truth, then you don't feel a need to defend yourself, do you? At least I don't. So when you defend yourself, maybe you might want to reconsider, do I really believe, am I really uh, in strong belief of these ideas? And another thing that I've talked about in previous videos, the idea if you're really having a challenging conversation, when that cat crap seems like it's stuck to the rug, it ain't coming out, then maybe you can find a way to see if you can prove the other person right. And that might add a little empathy to the situation because we, beyond, we believe beyond layers and layers and layers of resentment and disagreement and whatever those other challenging emotions are, all that's left is a deep, divine, empathetic love stored in your heart field. I got close because the school buses. Speak of resentments, what's the, what's the most recent thing you've resented me for? The picture. Daniel, what's the thing you've resented me for most recently? Um, I guess in this video I got a little resentful for Timothy when he was going to say something. I got resentful to you. I know the sun's a little brutal, brutal good, uh, that you took so long. And does that mean that you're uncomfortable with silence? Uh, but especially when I'm on camera. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Which is understandable. <laughs> Um, but you know what? An opinion I would have, I have about you, Daniel, is that I think that you would be more captivating with your messages if every once in a while you took a second to breathe and kind of just, uh, you, you seem a little rushed. Shut your, up, I'm going to shoot you. In your delivery. That wasn't, that's not how we typically joke with each other. I would say that was an inappropriate joke. That would be sarcasm. Sarcasm. Um, so you're saying that if I slowed my pace down. Yeah, like it seems like you're in a rush. Like you're like you're saying things so fast that you imagine that I like it looks like you imagine that the listener is like getting ready to walk away mm -hmm. any second and if you pause for the briefest moment that they're gonna be gone. So I, you have to spit everything out super fast. I feel that way over the YouTube audience. I you well, you might be right. <laughs> I don't know. Am I right? Let us know. Thanks for sharing. What about you? What are you resenting me for? Um recently. I resent you for your, um, I, I would have labeled it your obsession with circumcision lately. And it seems that like every, uh, okay. Stopping circumcision. Yes, yeah, stop. It seems like most conversations we get into lately, especially with a, a new friend that we haven't seen in a while, you talk about, like you want to talk about circumcision. <laughs> and it's something that I'm not very much, uh informed on. I mean, of course, I know the basics about it, but he's gone in depth to studying this stuff <laughs> and why it's a conspiracy. So, um, but what does that say about me? Maybe, maybe my resentment towards you about, uh, what is it called? Circumcision. Circumcision. Or short, actually, we'll call, we'll call it male genital mutilation. <laughs> male or genital, just genital mutilation. mutilation. <laughs> maybe my resentment reflects on me that I'm insecure about my lack of knowledge on the subject and I, I just am insecure about it and I resent you for knowing so much about it. Mm. If you want that to be our next video subject, definitely let us know because that's something I'm starting to wonder about, the conspiracy behind that and uh, the trauma that comes from that, the post-stress traumatic syndrome, uh, whatever. How, how do you say that acronym? The PTSD? That comes from that being, because I was snipped when I was uh, eight days old at a Jewish party they call a bris. And I wonder if there was any subconscious implicit memories that are affecting my ability to empathize with others from that. You know, if you want change, you know what, well, you know what they say, and by they I mean Brandon Hawk. you got to have an awareness, an acceptance, and action. And I feel like I'm on the action phase of that. I'm trying to take back my feeling sense. Thanks for uh, Daniel Vitalis' podcast for informing that. I love being surrounded by amazing people, even if it's on the internet.
Yeah, I like, I appreciate what you're talking about there because you're, in a way, being the change that you want to see. If you want something to change, then start changing it. Do it yourself and stop waiting on your circumstances to come to you. You have to create the circumstances, my friends. Yes, and I, I just love, I think what I'm really trying to drive home here is that if you are having a problem with someone else, or if you are not having fun, or you feel uninspired, and especially if you tell that about other people when they're not around, first of all, you're talking about yourself. Second of all, that you have to have the courage to share your truth with the people that you were triggered by their mm -hmm. reflection. Do you have that courage? And if you don't, stop blaming others. Just like, take a look in the mirror and be, realize, like, you know what, I'm, I'm so uninspiring around these people. Am I going to change something or not? Yeah, and the funny thing about that is oftentimes we hold our truths about or opinions about people because we're afraid of offending them, right? But what I've realized is the most hurtful thing that you can do to me is be so scared of offending me that you don't even share your, your opinions about me to me. Which also reminds me of one of the uh, my favorite ideas I've heard from Team Angarabra was that the mo one of the most neglected forms of love today is withholding our resentments. That, that, that's one of the best ways we can love each other. This is God's law to love each other. And the way I see the world is starving for this type of communication. I think you missed my quote up, man. I changed it a little, but I don't think it made sense long ago. <laughs> said it. <laughs> Rephrase it for me, please. It, it's the most neglected form of love is sharing your resentments with one another. With your loved ones, especially. Oh, oh, I said withholding? Yeah, withholding. Yeah, I think, uh, if you didn't understand, hopefully that added clarity. But basically, yeah. Uh, we want to talk about our resentments like we talk about the weather. And it's sunny out here today. So nice. Have you gotten, have you gotten your feet in the dirt and some vitamin D on your skin today? How serious are you about having fun? What else do I write about? Let me rephrase that now. Look at those birds up there. They're saying something. Anything else? <laughs> Lose your mind and come to your senses. Pay attention to your breath, your heart, the sweat on your palms, the air in your lungs, the heat on your back, and the most importantly, the provider of that all, which is God. If you don't have a relationship with God, then I'm sorry. And um, you should seek that out. And uh, would you like to say a magic word to see if anyone got this far in the video? Because we are 17 and a half minutes in at most. Um, yeah. Sharp leaves. Sharp leaves? Yeah. And if you don't know what that means. Those are really good for cleaning wax out of your earphones. And if you have those on your property, your earphones are just a second from being much cleaner. Peace in.